This episode of Motoring Box is proudly supported by Century Batteries. Welcome back to Motoring Box. I'm Sean McCalla and this is my 2002 Mitsubishi Magna Rally Art. So we are continuing our journey to try and get a safety certificate and get this car registered. And I made a really bold claim last episode that it was pretty much ready to go. But then I remembered there are lots of tiny little things which need to be fixed, which would potentially fail that certificate. One of them, are the cloudy headlights and I've got some bulbs out so they are easy fixes which we'll sort out this episode and I'm going to fit a new battery as well and I've also got some new tail lights so we'll slap them in as well and we'll see what else we've got time for because I'm actually really short on time I've only got a couple of hours per weekend to film these videos and that's why I've got people on social media slamming me for not doing much per episode so this is a spare time thing and just have a think about it if I wasn't filming videos on a Magna Rally art who else is actually doing it? Nobody. So, let's get into it. So check out this passenger side headlight here. It is beautifully clear because I polished this up last night just to see how it would go. And today we're gonna to be doing the same thing to the driver's side. So this one, it looks terrible. You can see it there in the shine of the light. Luckily, this is a really simple thing to fix. So let me show you how to do it. So this light is generally pretty clean. You could give it a bit of a spray and a wipe over first if you wanted to. I'm not gonna bother because it's pretty much shot. Uh, the product I like to use though is Meguiar's Plastics, which is like a clear plastic cleaner and polish. So as it says, it's great for headlights and I found that to be the case. And what I like to do is just put a smattering of it over the lens. Now from this point, you can actually get like a microfiber or other cloth and start sort of buffing it by hand but I actually like to use a buffing cone. So you can buy these from super cheap. They're like 10 bucks or 15 bucks max. Get a couple of them. Like you see here, it goes in the end of a drill. So it makes it really simple. So no elbow grease required. I like to sort of spin it really slowly and sort of get the compound here loaded up into it. Smear it over the whole lens. Now this light's pretty bad, so it's probably going to need a few applications of it. But uh, yeah, let's go over it once and we'll just see how it turns out. Okay, so let's get a sit rep by buffing this off. And we're probably gonna need to hit it a few more times, I imagine. Wow, it's looking pretty good. There's a few patches, namely one here. There's kind of two patches here in front of the lights themselves. But the rest of that is looking great. So let's load this up again and uh, we'll give it another going over. Let's see how it went this time. So at the moment there is still a little bit of cloudiness here, still a little bit here. There is a tiny bit left there. I've never actually tried to polish a headlight which was this far gone, so we'll hit it again a few more times, but yeah, I don't know whether some of this is on the inside or whether it's all on the outside. Yeah, these are not really getting any better, but that's just me being very picky. Overall, the lens looks really great and it's like a night and day difference compared to how it was. So apart from taking the headlight apart, that is probably about as good as it's going to get. So here's the end result. We've got the passenger side looking great. Driver side, just as good. So yeah, like I said, there were a few little spots. You're probably not even gonna see them on camera unless it's on the right angle. You can just see here. You can just see a little bit of it there. But yeah, look, that's just if I'm being pedantic. I think it looks really good though. Next up, I'm gonna throw a Century battery in this thing because they are our sponsors of the channel. I actually found a lot of surface rust under here because the battery sits in this plastic kind of thing, which goes down into there. So that is a motoring box top tip. The next time you check your battery, why not pull it out, have a look under the battery tray, get it all nice and clean. 
because that is one area where rust does love to creep in. So we'll give this a bit of a clean up. I like to use Thai foam because that's my go-to product at the moment. This doesn't like to spray unless the can is level. We're actually going to use that product to give this whole engine bay a clean up very soon. Uh, long time viewers would have seen I've used it before on my BA Falcon XR6 Turbos engine bay. So if you want to have a look at that, click up here. It turned out amazing and still looks good even to this day. So we're going to throw in our Century battery. This is a 67 MF. Sometimes it can be really tricky to work out what is the right battery for your car. Uh, if you're wondering, do go to centurybatteries.com.au Use their battery finder, so it's the make, model, year, and what spec or trim level the car is, uh, and it'll tell you what battery it actually needs. More often than not, you'll have the choice of a UHP, ultra high performance, or an HP, high performance. So I usually spin these around until I start to meet resistance, get both of them to that point, and then just give each one a few additional turns. Until it screams maybe. <laughs> so yeah, so long as you grab your battery and it doesn't move, that's plenty. So we're going to attach the terminals now. This one actually has an additional sort of an eyelet. Um, I'm not sure why it's separate like this, but I do know is that if this one isn't connected, the remote boot release doesn't work. So I don't know what else is powered by that or why it is like that, but it's like that. So that's the way it is. And it goes a little something like this. Make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom of the post. Again, not to the ability of your strength, just so it's nice and tight. And then of course we have to place this additional uh, little connector here on. I guess it is factory because there's two little notches here for them to hang out. Yeah, it's just bizarre. Like so. Then we can attach the negative terminal and then tighten it up. But we're not done here because I have an additional part to install, which is actually, funnily enough, kind of rare, but shouldn't be. And that is a battery cover. So a lot of Magnus at the moment don't seem to have these from what I can see in photos on the internet. Um, I'm not sure what Magnus actually came standard with these, but I'm guessing a lot of them must just get taken off over the years and they get misplaced and they don't go back onto the car. So it should be fairly simple to install. It looks like it just clips on over the top of the sort of lower portion. So for jobs like this, I actually keep a container here full of scrivets. I just purchased these from eBay. It was like a huge kit and they come in a whole lot of different sizes. So you just kind of have to rummage through and, and find one that fits. And I think I may have just found one straight up. So there's different sorts. There's the ones that just push in or there's the ones that actually have the Phillips head screw in the top. So I'll leave a link uh, in the description to this kit. I've just got it in a baby formula tin, but it just comes in a plastic bag full of different sizes. So it's a really useful thing to have if you're working on a lot of old nuggety cars like I do. Look at that, done. Beautiful. And I think that just clips shut. So for the people who usually cry out, ah, where do we get this stuff? Well, just look everywhere, eBay, uh, try wreckers as well because in theory there should be still a lot of magnets out there which still have these fitted uh, But yeah, they must just go missing over the years But wait, there's more One last thing I want to do here before we're done is I want to actually install a Century BM12V battery monitor So these are actually really cool to have if you have a car that you don't drive very often Or if you've just got a car that you want to keep a really strict eye on what condition the battery's in Make sure it's got good voltage and make sure it's actually performing well during cranking this is actually a really cool thing to have. So these things, very simple to install. The kit comes with some Velcro that you can put on the back here and stick it to the top of your battery. And then all you have to do then is connect the positive red one to the positive nut on your terminal there and do the same for the negative black one. So when you fire the app up, you'll see up the top left there, it says connected. So we are at 12.65 volts, which in battery speak is around fully charged. So anything 12.6, 12.7 above is 100%. If we go to the next tab, we've got a cranking voltage test. So what we can do here is we'll pop the clutch in 
and we can start the car. So it'll tell you how the battery performed during that start. So let's give it a shot. Ignition, cranking. So cranking voltage, it's within the standard range. So that is also a really cool thing to keep an eye on. Uh, if it drops down below the standard range, then you know there's potentially an issue. You maybe need to look at recharging your battery. So this battery has actually been sitting on the bench for probably a month or two. So it's going to benefit from being in the car and once we get the car running, a lot of driving, a lot of charging. So I'll probably stick that thing on charge just to make sure she's happy. But otherwise, uh, we can move on to the next part, which is a charging test. Turn off the aircon, cigarette lighter. So turn the headlights on only. So we'll turn them on. So we need to go to 2500 RPM. And there we go. So you can detect what RPM you've got. So the charging at idle is looking great. It's in the standard range. The charging voltage at high RPM, also great. So that is a really cool thing to have. Handy way to check your vehicle's charging system. And again, once you've installed it, you can pretty much set and forget it. And then anytime you want to check, fire up your phone and you're away. Headlights off. So right now we're going to move around the back because I've got something else to show you. So these lights are actually aftermarket and I hate them. <laughs> it doesn't suit the car at all. Maybe if you had a silver or white car, it would, but for these, I think they look horrendous. So I've actually sourced a set of fairly rare VRX lights. So these are a smoked kind of a blackened version, which came on some of the later model Magnas and uh, they are pretty hard to come by. This one actually has a couple of LED bulbs in it, but I'm just gonna test them out once we get that installed. So that's it, there's a connector here which uh, is loose for some reason, but we'll find out why, I guess. Out she comes. Really looking forward to never seeing these ever again. Wow, look at that. So much better. So again, with parts that are plastic or mounted into plastic, you don't want to go for maximum strength. You just want to get them tight and then just don't push it too far. Look at that. Beautiful. So straight away, if we want to run LEDs, we're going to need a resistor because that is way too fast. But the reverse lights, on the other hand, beautiful. Apart from the hyper flash, we are good. Let's check the brakes as well. All right, I just reviewed the footage, look good. So uh, yeah, we'll come back and we'll fit a resistor to the indicator later. Uh, we'll just have to check. I believe the LED brake light bulb said it was CAN bus compatible. So we'll just have to check whether the cruise control is affected. If it is, then we'll need a resistor on those as well. I also want to test whether this thing here works as well, so I can only do that by filming it and reviewing the footage, so let's check it out now. So it looks like a few of the LED diodes might be out, but the majority of them were working, so I don't know whether... You can obviously take this thing out, but I don't know if you can actually service any of those LEDs or whether they're very easy to replace. Good enough. These lights look way better than the other ones. <laughs> look at that, beautiful. Another item we needed for Roadworthy, of course, was the wipers and the washers. So I actually had a split T-piece on the washer line here. I just took it down to super cheap, found a brass replacement, eyeballed it to make sure it was the right size, and hopefully we are good to go. With the wiper arms, I gave them a quick coat of satin black paint, and I've also got some new uh, frameless style wiper blades on them. So I quite like these things. These are the Bosch Aero Wiper, I think they're called, Aero Twin. Uh, I think they're really good. They do a really good job. They're quiet. You don't get that sort of chatter that you can sometimes get with the standard metal wiper arms. So I'll just double check this. Not bad. This one here is aimed up a little bit high, but they do the job. So that should be good enough. So I'm gonna leave it there for today, guys. 
bit of a short video, but we are slowly chipping away at this car, getting it ready for Roadworthy. So look, I just want to put that note out there one more time. If you have a few small YouTubers that you follow like myself, like people like Flip My Ride, even Rex H, he's a, he's a larger YouTuber, but he's still starting out, throw your support behind them because we cannot do this without your views, without your subscriptions, without your likes. So if you want to support me or any other small Australian automotive YouTubers, get behind them because YouTube in the automotive space is dominated by the Americans. We've got a lot of cool cars here as well. So we could definitely be doing a lot more on the channel. So thank you very much for watching guys. Have a good one and I'll see you very soon.